Hey guys, it is NCS Fan 001 here for another one of those weekly trophy list updates. Today's date is Monday, April 5th, 2021. So this will have covered the week of, I believe it would be March 29th through April 4th. Is that correct? March 29th through April 4th of 2020. Uh, or 2021. Good thing it's not still 2020. Uh, this was a... It wasn't a numerically successful week in terms of the number of trophies earned. I only earned like four or five trophies this week. But in terms of what I actually did earn in one of the games, I am extremely happy about. Now, also, since it is the start of another month, make sure to log into GTA 5 so you can get your free million dollars. And if you log in in the next couple days, they're doing a super, super easy like challenge type thing where you just have to complete five stunt jumps uh but by i think it's april 8th i think is the last day it's available so just complete five stunt jumps and you get another half a million dollars which is pretty awesome so i went ahead and did that and logged in on sunday so that's all good but more importantly is the trophy progress so i did not get to work on the division this week but i've got a group together so we will see how that goes hopefully we can actually start getting to work on in the next week or so but i don't know and I know I say it every week with saying that I'm going to get started on Far Cry 2 this week. Well, this week I'm going to say I'm not going to play any Far Cry 2 this week so that no one's surprised if I don't make any progress by next week. Or, more likely than not, I will end up actually making progress this week. I don't really know. I guess we'll have to see about that. And I do apologize for the lack of streams in later times. Like I've said last week, I'm going to start working overtime. I've started actually working overtime this past week, and it's uh, good pay for what it is, so for some pretty easy work. And uh, I'm not upset about that. I need the extra money. It'll be good for me and for gaming and everything like that, or for eating a little bit better food sometimes. So if videos are, you know, later in the day or something, things like that, then that is the reason why. So as for progress this week, it was earned on two games. The first was Battlefield 5. I earned a couple of trophies here, sort of saving the campaign for later. So I managed to get this trophy, kill 10 enemies with secondary weapons in a single game. I thought I was going to end up having to boost this one, but actually it wasn't really that hard. I was just, I'm not that good at the game, like I said, and I got lucky with a good map to play it on that had a lot of close quarters stuff. Now, I do hate, though, that, like, it feels constantly like I'm shooting people, you know, ten times and not getting kills, but they'll just turn around and one-shot me with literally any weapon in the game. And it's felt that way ever since I started this one, more so than really any other Battlefield game that I've played. So, maybe I'm just crazy, but it definitely feels like that's happening, and it's kind of annoying. But, I mean, I'm making slow progress, and there's not really much skill-based stuff left. Uh, this one, though, this Frontlines trophy is going to have to be boosted because there's no one playing the game mode anymore. So this one, I'm like 99% sure, is going to have to be boosted. Along with, of course, Death from Above, which everyone already boosts anyway. Uh, Roadkill, I'm sure I will be able to get, naturally. I'd be shocked if I don't have this one done by the time I finish the Grindier trophies, but it would also be fairly easy to boost. And then I also earned Globetrotter. Play a round of Conquest on each of the launch maps. This trophy was unobtainable for a while because they like removed one of the maps from rotation or something like that, which is so stupid. But it is obtainable again. You just have to go into the advanced search in Conquest and just keep looking for those particular eight maps. You need to finish the match. Like, you need to actually complete the match on each game, so you can't just log into the match and then leave. You have to actually play through to the end, but it looks like you don't have to be in there from the beginning, because I was not in every one of those games from the beginning, but I did have to finish all of them to get it to count. So, maybe that was just unlucky, but I think that's what you have to do. Then... As for the scores, I'm at like 140,000 total score as a player, so that trophy is almost done. 500,000 is quite a bit, but it's not too bad. I'm a little bit more worried about Jack of All Trades in terms of it actually requiring me to play in all the different classes. But I mean, it's not hard by any means. It's just a little bit time consuming. The better you are at the game, the faster you can get this done. So it's not really that big a deal. I have actually, I've written down some of my stats for this game, if I can pull up my sticky note. So, 
I have, I obviously haven't destroyed any manned stationary weapons, and I haven't captured many flags and front lines. I need three more road kills, so made some progress there. Yeah, I'm at 139,000-ish player score, so that's close on that one. For my different classes, I mostly need points with Recon. That's my worst right now. I need another 80,000, and 75,000 with Assault, and 78,000 with Medic, and about 78,000 for Support. So, it's going to take a little while to get through that, but I mean, nothing really difficult is left that I can't boost. Because I can boost the two difficult trophies, or the difficult trophy and the unobtainable trophy. But, that's really all I have to worry about with this game. So, it's going to take some time, but I will slowly work my way through it. And then, of course, I need to get started on the campaign for the game at some point. So, I have to beat all of the missions on the highest difficulty in order to earn all of the trophies. I don't think it's terribly difficult from what I've heard, but it might be like a little bit harder than Battlefield 1. I don't know yet. I guess we'll have to see when we get around to it. And then the big progress this week and what I've been dedicating so much of my time to for like over a month now. Destiny is getting so close to 100%. But before we look at the base game, we'll go ahead and take a look at this little uh, Taken King completion at 100%. So we can talk about this whole DLC now. The Taken King quest is the story quest. The Court of Oryx is one that I did a few weeks ago. I don't really remember exactly what it was, but it's not a hard quest. I don't really remember what Echoes of Oryx was either. Like, those are just both, like, long strands of side quests of some kind. Stormcaller's Path, Sunbreaker's Challenge, and Night Stalker's Tale are all character-specific, so they're how you unlock your third subclass for each main class. So, nothing really difficult with that one. They're actually fairly easy quests. The Wolves of Mars quest, I believe, is a little bit grindy. Takes some time, but it's not terribly difficult. And then, of course, you have to finish the raid and finish the raid on Heroic, which we did at the same time because, you know, play through it on Heroic and you get both trophies. Uh, this raid, like, on regular difficulty was super, super easy. Like, we were having, like, no problem when we were doing that for the Calcified Fragments, which I will come back to in a second. Heroic was a bit of a challenge, but honestly, I felt like this one was easier for me and the group I was playing with than Wrath of the Machine, which I don't think is a normally, you know, a normal opinion, per se, but I feel like we had less trouble with King's Fall than we did with Wrath of the Machine, but maybe that was just me. I don't know. Now, the last trophy I needed was the Old Hunger questline. This is a monster of a questline. First, you have to find a Calcified Fragment and then complete a short quest. Then you have to find another five fragments, or get to a total of five, and then complete another quest. Those two, none of that's too difficult. But then you have to get to, I think it's ten fragments or something, and then complete, like, a harder version of a quest. That's where it starts to get tougher. Then you have to reach, like, twenty or something, and complete a strike, maybe twenty-five or something, and then complete a strike. And then finally, you have to reach forty-five out of the fifty total, and then complete a heroic, tougher mission. Uh, the Calcified Fragment Grind was not a fun one because maybe 20 to 25 of them can be found by wandering around the ship. I think it's more like 20 of them. Then another like 10 come from the missions and the strikes, which are all fairly easy to get. So about 30 of them are probably not going to give you much trouble. And then the rest of them, though, are a little bit more of a problem. Some of them are coming from various runes that you can do. Like the Agonarch rune and the Wormsinger rune, stuff like that, just complete their side quests. You also get one for completing the bounty string for this, for the Court of Oryx stuff, and that one's actually really not too hard. But we ended up getting our last, like, four from the King's Fall raid, so that was one thing we definitely needed to do, was finish the ones in the King's Fall raid. Uh, it took a while to get a group coordinated for that. That's where I was on Friday. That's why I didn't stream on Friday. I was working on this and on the base game. But it all it was all worth it because of the progress that was made. Got to get through this quest. It didn't take too long that day. But it's still, you know, it's a time-consuming, challenging quest if you're not as good at the game. Even if you're getting carried, it can be kind of annoying at a few points. Mostly just farming all those calcified fragments. Because a good bit of the ones we did were from the Court of Oryx, which is the sort of arena thing that you can do, the three-tiered arena. Uh, you have to complete all three of the different, like, once every third week boss ones, whatever you want to call it, like the super boss from the Antiquated Rune, the toughest boss, which that was only tough on the, like, Son of Crota or Son of Oryx or whatever one of them was. It was, I think it was Mini Crota, we were calling it. 
That one was probably the worst one. The other two really weren't that bad. Then there's a bunch that are randomly spawned from regular and stolen runes, the medium and lower level runes. So that was just, it's grindy, it requires luck, and it takes some time. Plus you have to get the runes and stuff themselves. So it wasn't the most fun time. This has been probably the least fun I've had with this game was just this particular quest line and some of the farming and stuff. Uh, as for Rise of Iron, I've completed six of the eight Iron Lord artifacts. There's only two left. But there's no guarantee that I will need either of the ones this coming week. We will have to see. Uh, yeah, so that's really all there is to say about that DLC. But then, the base game. I earned, finally, at long last, Flawless Raider. The infamous trophy from this game. The group I did it with was the same group that we had done all the raiding stuff with. They were really good at it. There were five of us total playing, and we got flawless first try. Now, I was definitely getting carried over all through some of the steps, mainly the maze and the final boss fight, just following instructions. But we did it first try, and I was able to hold my own, so I'm definitely proud that I've improved my gaming a little bit. And it's done, you know, the Crota's End Raid is really not that hard. Like, you just have, you know, two people in your fire team run the maze that know what they're doing, and you get through that easily, as long as no one dies falling into the maze at the very start, where you can very easily die. Then you have the bridge section, which is probably the toughest part of the overall raid, if you're not really well coordinated, but again, we got through it first try, just followed instructions and killed ads pretty much is a lot of my job. Then you just fight through a couple more corridors, clear out a bunch of enemies, nothing difficult with that, and then you have the final boss fight. I'm not entirely sure what was happening. I think what you have to do to kill Crota is you have everyone, like four or five people, launch a Gallahorn or another good rocket launcher just to bring down Crota's shields, and then the other person has a sword and basically kills her with a sword or him. I don't know if it's a her or him. But, you know, it's all done. And I cannot be happier because that is a fairly challenging trophy. It was the one that was a bit of a platinum blocker back in the day when the game came out. Because remember, I bought this game right around release day in 2015. Uh, so all I have left in the game, aside from the Iron Lord Artifacts, which is a DLC trophy, is to revive or discover 50 dead ghosts. I've discovered, I believe, 18. So that's not too difficult. I can knock that out in a day. Then we have fully upgrade Hunter and Warlock subclasses. I've got maybe five and a half to six more Warlock subclasses left, or nodes in the subclass left. So that's a grind, but I will get through it. As for Hunter, unless I made more progress than I thought, which I don't think happened... I'm probably just going to pay the $30 or whatever it is to buy the upgrade because I honestly don't want to deal with the grind again, even though I hate that they made it so grindy that it's almost necessary to do that. But you know, in, in the end, it's going to be okay because this is going to be a very solid platinum. This one would not have been a bad choice for 500 if I didn't already promise Far Cry 2 many times. So, I mean, Far Cry 2 is a much rarer platinum. It's a sub 1%. It's a sub... 0.6% actually. It's like a 0.57 on PSN profiles. And this one is like a 6-ish percent on PSN profiles for the Platinum. It's a much lower 100% though. It's only like a 2% for the 100. So let's go ahead and sync up the trophies. Level 719, 1%, 200, or 20,183 total trophies, 495 platinums, 2,885 golds, 5,406 silvers, 11,397 bronzes. So plans for the upcoming week. I will continue working on both Destiny and Battlefield 5. Like I said, I'm going to say I'm not going to do Far Cry 2 this week, and maybe I actually will end up doing it. I've also got another Gamefly game. It's a Zombieland Double Tap Road Trip. That's a fairly short one. I'll probably work on that one some because it should have a lot of easy trophies and stuff. And then I'll log into GTA 5 a couple more times just to make sure I get my money rewards because, you know, I want to make sure I have that for whenever I go back and do the Doomsday Heist or even the regular heists. But as for, you know, streams and stuff, I don't know what that's going to be. I think the only streams this week are going to be on Friday and Saturday unless something comes up big in gaming because I'm going to be working uh, late Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then I never stream on Mondays, obviously, because we have a trophy update video to do. So planning on working late Tuesday through Thursday, and then Friday hopefully will be a normal stream and stuff, and Saturday same way. 
Uh, yeah, I might just actually take a week off of the actual drinking part of the streams, though, just to rest a little bit and just do a normal... Well, it won't be quite normal because I'll have two cups of coffee in me, probably, so a different kind of being on something, I guess you could say. But now that we're entering another month, here are my current plans for the future, because I haven't gone over this in a few weeks. In April, I still really want to do The Division, but I mean, it's, it's awful, and I just don't want to do The Division, but I have to get it done, because it's one more trophy, and I would not be able to stand having just that one trophy left. Along with that, I still have to finish Destiny 1's Platinum and second DLC. Far Cry 2's Platinum and Battlefield 5's Platinum. Those are my goals for the month of April. I don't know if that'll actually happen, though. Then in May, we jump over to Resident Evil 7 and Uncharted 4. So Uncharted 4 when other people are online and Resident Evil 7 when they are not. In June, we will head over to Black Ops 3, getting that Platinum and DLC, start working on it. But it'll probably take, you know, more than a month of even constant playing. Then in July, we return to GTA 5 to clean up my last online-based game, which would be awesome. Well, kind of last one. But then we also have a few other single-player-based stuff, Call of Duty Classic and Shadow of the Colossus to do maybe later this year, the random trophies from Uncharted 3. And then, of course, there's Borderlands 3 with its DLCs. It's still got another one that's yet to release. Uh, the Outer Worlds, by the way, they've released their second DLC. Just thought I'd point that out if anyone didn't know. And then there's uh, The Division 2. Still got to start on that someday. Battlefield 4, got to start on that someday. But what I can talk about now is that, like, maybe right around the time that I was uploading the video last week was when we found out officially that the PlayStation, the PS3 store, and the Vita store, and the PSP store are officially shutting down. So it is now official. However, they did confirm that you're still going to be able to download anything that you've purchased. So it's not really a huge deal to me because I own... I mean, I don't have anything else to do on PS3. Vita... I don't know about Vita. The only thing I might still get on Vita anytime soon would probably... If I wanted to buy another Rataleka game, maybe, but... I guess, though, that's going to lock people out of a lot of the older Rataleka games if they, you know, if you can't buy them anymore. Well, that's that's something i got to wonder. Like, if you buy one of them on the PS4, will you still be able to download it on PS3 even if you haven't downloaded it pre previously? Or, I mean, on Vita, that's what I meant. I guess we'll have to see about that. I don't, I don't really know. I guess that we'll see what happens in a few months. Maybe they'll do a couple more big blowout sales. I wish they would have just put... Uh, put that Ride to Hell Retribution DLC back on there in the last couple months of the thing existing so I could actually go and get those trophies or go and buy that game and all of its DLC. Uh, yeah, that is going to be it for this video, guys. I don't really have anything else to talk about this week. I mean, I should drag this one out a little bit. I'm very tired, if you can't already tell. I'm definitely ready to go to bed. Anyway, that is going to be it for this week. Please like, favorite, share, comment. Let me know what you guys have been working on. Subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't already. Also, there's probably going to be another challenge run video out by the end of this week. It'll be another edited down one. It's a shorter one. And I will see you guys for more content later in the week.